Hello everybody, I hope you're all healthy and you're doing well during this time. Um, today I want to bring to you, hello everybody, I hope you're doing well and you're healthy and you're staying safe during this crisis. In any case, I thought today I would bring to you a linear progression toward doing a backflip without having to use a map or a spotter or anything like that. Now, if you want to see the more detailed version of this, please go on to my YouTube tutorial I did years ago. I still think it is loaded with information that is useful to everybody. But this one's going to be a short one, just showing you the basic stuff that I think is necessary to get you to doing a backflip. The proper progressions that you should have um, in place so that you feel safe doing any of these kind of things. All right, let's get started. Now it's important to keep in mind that every single one of these things I'm going to show you can be broken down into dozens of ways of developing them, all right? Not, there's not just uh, these skills alone, right? And I know some people are not going to be able to do some of these things based on their flexibility, mobility, strength, and everything along those lines. And those are some things to consider if you want to develop uh, safely and not skip steps and have an easier time along the way developing acrobatic skills. So just keep that in mind that not everything in here is like, oh, if you can't get it on the first try or even the hundredth try, even the thousandth try, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to do it. It just means that you might have to take a different route for you to get there. All right. And uh, I myself have been through a lot of different types of situations where I had to go back and relearn things a certain way in order to get better at them. I've even lost skills that I developed a long time ago and had to relearn them a different way because the old way of learning them didn't work for me. So yes, keep all that in mind. So if you do enjoy the way I'm teaching here, please get a hold of me. I would love to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, obviously online during this time or in person if we ever get the chance to do that. You guys, enjoy this. Okay, step one for you would be obviously the handstand. Why a handstand? It teaches you how to be comfortable being upside down and being able to catch the floor. So when we're doing backflips, you want to be able to catch the floor should you mess up. Now, you can get into those lots of different ways. It doesn't have to be the gymnastics way. It can be the capoeira way with your hands coming down. It could be the hand balance way where you hop your feet up. There's lots of different ways to get into the handstand, but you do have to be comfortable on your hands, upside down. All right, so keep that in mind. That's the first progression I recommend for you. Be comfortable in your handstand. Okay, what you saw there was my bridge, my crappy bridge, but still a bridge, right? And then you also saw my compression position, my front pike fold, and also my neck fold in the back right there, the candlestick fold, and or plow position. Now, the reason why you want those is they're the extreme positions of what you're going to be ending up in when you're rotating over for your back foot eventually. Uh, I like having enough uh, mobility and flexibility in my neck and shoulders so that if I were to accidentally crunch over into that suitcase of this position, I wouldn't be in as much danger, okay? Same thing for the forward fold. They're just two different ways of getting into the same position. And then of course the bridge position because when we're going to be learning the progression for this, you want to be able to do the back handspring, so to speak, all right, over into the bridge position. So you want to have some type of a bridge ability to be able to do this. Okay, what you saw there was a back bend, all right? And again, my bridging position is not the most ideal one, but I still can do a back bend of some sort, all right? And that's really important because it means I'm not afraid of bending backwards, looking for the floor and putting my hands down. This is pivotal and super important to be able to go backwards safely because your mind and your body understand that should you decide to not go, you can still get your hands to the floor, all right? So just keep that in mind. A nice back bend is gonna be very useful for this kind of situation, learning toward your back flip. This is called a macaco. It means monkey in Portuguese, and it is a capoeira-based movement. Now, the first one you saw me do was a really simple one that doesn't require you to go upside down at all. It even has a different name in the capoeira language and vocabulary because it looks so different, but the variation is there. Now, for the back version, when I, the version I did upside down, the full macaco over, that one's just called macaco. All right, and you can see why the handstand position is so important there, right? You can see why the backbend position is so important there. You can see why the uh, bridge position, I think I said that already, is so important there. And to not to get redundant, why? It makes you comfortable going over backwards. I cannot stress this enough. The more comfortable you are going over backwards, the easier a backflip is gonna be because you have more options to save yourself should you decide to not do it halfway through the skill. All right, so next one right there was Makako. And the more upside down you can get, the better off you're gonna be with that skill. The more you can get to that handstand position upside down, the better. The less you're turning off to the side, the better. 
Okay, so this is where things start to get interesting, all right? This is when we start forming into our back handspring style of training. Uh, once you get your back handspring, a back tuck is not that far off, kind of sort. So you have your makaka, right? Now we're gonna start doing a jumping makaka where you have the same kind of idea, but you're jumping into the position instead so you have some air time. And that air time is crucial for teaching you what it feels like to float for a little bit before you pull your legs over in the back foot. But we're not there yet, right? Still, we gotta get our back handspring. So this is a jumping macaco, right? So before, I would put my hand down, lean forward, and jump over backwards. Same idea now, I'm gonna lean to the side because I'm probably gonna be scared of going over backwards. I'm gonna have to lean to the side, look to the side, and that's all okay at first. Because you're doing this without a spot, you're doing this without mats, you need to be safe about this. So it's okay to turn your head and save your neck. It's okay. Right? So that was a small little jump to the side. Now, all I'm going to do is as I get more comfortable and as I videotape myself to see how horrible I'm doing, I'm going to try to make small corrections along the way until I get more and more and more in a backwards position and feel more comfortable going over backwards. It takes a long time for this to happen. Days, weeks, months. Okay? Do the process. Don't do too much of it and get used to the situation you're in. All right? So slowly we're going to build that more and more and more and more to the time that we are actually in a position, in a back handspring position. Okay? Let's do it again. Now it's to the side. I'm going to slightly angle it more to the other way. So I'm going to come down nice and low so I feel comfortable with this. And instead of going to the side like that, I'm going to bring it back a little bit more. Right? So now it's a little sideways, but I'm going over the back a little bit more, jumping into it. Now the lower you are to the ground, the harder it is to get your height, but the more, the less risk you have of falling down. So now we've got to start bringing it to the point where we're up a little bit higher, and that's going to give us more time to jump over, but only as you feel comfortable. Only as you feel comfortable. You have to be comfortable with this. This is your body. You have to walk home with it. And let's just say we're stuck in our houses, so we have to stay home with it. Let's stay home with a healthy body, okay? So now, same idea but I'm gonna be a little bit higher up, okay? I'm gonna jump a little bit more forcefully back. I'm looking, placing my hands, everything should be safe. Right, so that's a really horrible, cruddy back handspring, okay, in that kind of sense. I went over, bent arms, grabbed the floor, and as I start getting better at that, I can start convincing myself, okay, I'm gonna start putting more effort into this, now we can start adding some form and technique. So. The first form we're going to be thinking about now is when we swing our arms over, we're swinging them back first. So I'm going to be sitting down. I want to fall backward, and it's okay if you go up and down at first, but I want to fall backward. So sit like you're going to sit into a chair and someone pulls a chair out from underneath you. So you're sitting and so you're falling backward, okay? And you want your arms to swing as you're falling backwards and you're jumping over. This will take some time to get used to. It will look horrible at first, but we will get there. You will get there, okay? If a schmuck like me can figure this out without any education and background, you can figure this out too. So as I'm feeling better, this will be another bad one, but it will be a safe one, right? So I'm here. My legs straddled over for safety. I didn't keep them tight together, and I went straight over, right? Is it going to happen on the first try? Absolutely not. All right, maybe you'll jump to the side. Maybe you'll do a macaco out. Maybe you'll cartwheel out. But that's okay because it's a process. As you get better at this, right, you can start to tighten your form up where your legs are tighter together, your arms are more up by your ears, and as things get better, you will get better at this skill yourself. So I'm gonna do a better one now. We're gonna skip forward a couple months down the line, and this is what it should start to feel like toward the end. Right? And that one was it's okay, kind of bend my arms a little bit, bend my legs a little bit, right? And it will get better with time, okay? You build on the form of time. If you try to do too much at the beginning with your form, if you have a spotter, you, you will get there, okay? A little quicker or something with your form and everything will arrive a lot, lot better. But at first, you're not gonna be able to do that. It's gonna be too much for you to think about. You gotta take it slow, focus on one thing at a time. You can't think about five things at a time when you're in the air. You don't have the time to do that. It's, it's too much. So over time, you get better, you start building up. Also, you saw me snap down the two feet. That will be very useful for doing your back flip, but usually with the back handspring on hard ground, 
you're going to want to step out of the scale. It'll feel a lot better for you as well. So I highly suggest doing that. I'll show you one of those real quick to show you what I mean. So I'm going to do a step out of this one. Right? A little step out there so I don't have to take the impact. Okay, so we're starting to get a lot better at this, okay? And you saw me travel with that back handspring. That makes it easier if you're traveling a direction. But to get the back tuck, you have to go up and down. So you're going to do a high back handspring. So instead of traveling, now we're going to tighten it up, bring it closer together, more in place, like the circus back handsprings, only we're not going to undercut, okay? Because that'll make you do a gainer. And that's not fun your first time you learn this. It's scary. So, you ready? A little bit higher, but back handspring. So now I'm going to go nice and high. Next progression, high back handspring. I don't do these very often anymore, so. And I still went backward a bit because that's what I'm accustomed to doing now. But I had more time in the air and that's what I was trying to show you, okay? And I almost hit my furniture over there, so good thing I didn't do that because that would have hurt. Now, remember kids, always move the couch. Okay, so you have a nice high back handspring. Next progression. When you see the ground, put your feet down. Okay, so you're gonna have your hands there, just in case, just in case they're there, okay, to touch the ground. But when you see the ground, put your feet down. This is more of a whip back. Look what I do here. So you saw how low I was. That was a super horrible back lift, right? I'm really arched, okay? And by the way, all the stuff you've been doing up to this point is going to get you a lot of awareness for being upside down. And that's why we've been doing it this way. To build it safely, on your own. So come over and see the ground. Okay? Put your feet down. Now, first you won't be able to see the ground, put your feet down. It's going to take a while for you to get used to that feeling of seeing the ground and doing it. And you might just have the awareness to be able to put your feet down to the floor. Like for me, I don't have to see the floor to put my feet down. I know where it is. I've been doing these thousands of times. But that's what you're trying to do. When you feel that arch over, your hands are there just in case to tap the floor if you need it, but you put both your feet down underneath you. From there, okay, you did it backflip. It was horrible, but you did it. Right? Now we've got to slowly build that so it's higher and higher up until you're more facing forward. This is a great place to be. All right? So now, as I get better at this, okay, instead of arching over, now I'm going to start to build some form. I'm going to try and pull my knees in tighter to my body. Work on your backward rolls. Okay? Work on your backward rolls. Build your strength. Do your leg lifts. Okay? All these things are other things we have to talk about. This is a linear progression. Most people will not get this, like, perfectly. Okay? It takes a while. A lot of building. So you build your shape now. Right? So let's say now, instead of just swinging myself back and looking at the ground, now I'm going to try and tuck my legs up. So I'm still going to look back a little bit. So then I'm going to tuck my legs up and make a nice shape, right? So I look back a little, but I pull my legs in and it makes me go over a lot quicker. Still really cruddy, but I'm landing the backflip. And most people would think of this as, you did it, you did the backflip, and it's good. But we're going to make it better. So now, as you start getting better, and eventually we're going to talk more about this, but we're going to eventually build this to be a nice high, looking forward backflip, okay? So I'm going to show that now, the best form I can do at the moment, and there's a lot of things to be covered in this linear progression. So just keep in mind that it's probably going to take a lot longer than this. It, it will take a lot longer than this. If you get, there's no such thing as learn a backflip in five minutes. That's bullshit. Okay? It's bullshit. It's not true. It's going to take a lot longer. You can learn how it works, but you're not going to learn it in your body. Okay? I don't appreciate videos like that. I don't. This takes a lot longer. Eyes forward. Build your form. Okay? I'll do another one because I tilted to the left a little bit. A little bit better. And one more. I'll land it back in my same spot. That was good. One more. That might travel backward. That's okay. All right. So anyway, everybody, hope you enjoyed that. 
Take a look at the older video too to see the similarities and differences. And again, every single one of these progressions along the way can be broken down into further and further elements. Contact me if you're interested in online lessons and if you're building any other tutorials, but I need to know that people are interested. I'm not just gonna build stuff for nothing, okay? Love you all, stay safe, stay positive, and do the work. <laughs>